You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. If you were here on Monday's show, I, uh, I I kind of riffed a little bit on LSU's uh, roster management and sort of the approach that LSU has taken to building their roster in an NIL era. And I would highly recommend, if you missed it, you can go catch it on demand. Uh, the After Further Review LSU YouTube channel. It was a video we posted yesterday. Um and I'll summarize it, but I would really it's 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 all it's always odd because the thing sometimes the things that everybody needs, like you really need to hear, or the things sometimes people aren't interested in hearing. And that's one of them. Because the way Brian Kelly, I'll summarize it just very briefly, the way Brian Kelly is looking at building his roster is right. He's building through the high school ranks and supplementing with the transfer portal. The problem LSU has is right now their collective is not funded well enough to be able to, to afford the top of the transfer portal. That's why guys like Keon Coleman and Braden Fisk and Fen Fentrell Cypress went to Florida State and not LSU when you wanted them. That's how schools like Miami and USC and Texas have very quickly rebuilt their rosters and ascended because they have their historically relevant programs that have fallen on hard times and their boosters are very motivated and willing to spend. So that's that's a summary. And while you look nationally and you go, oh, Olivia Dunn and Angel Reese and Flage, and yes, LSU has a lot of student athletes that have done exceptionally well in the NIL space, but their success is really not congruent with LSU. It like Olivia Dunn, if she if she went to School X, if she went to the University of Idaho, she'd still be what she was. She did a brilliant job building her TikTok following when TikTok was in its infancy, and we, we've seen what's happened there. Anyway, my point is that LSU, as far as funding its collective, is very far behind. So... You know, the, the point that I was making essentially is you know, LSU's got to find a way to to fund the collective. And you keep shaking the same trees of the, of the donors and the boosters that paid Ed Ogeron $17 million to go away and guaranteed Brian Kelly $100 million and Kim Mulkey's new salary. And you understand it, and you keep going all the same people, and then you now you got to fund a collective, and they'll look at you cross-eyed. So, and I get it. So part of what, you know, my argument was like, LSU is going to have to find a way to get creative. You know, maybe it's something like what I suggested yesterday on the show is maybe you put like a $2 or a $5 tax on every ticket sold. And that goes to the collective. I mean, you can handle it from an accounting standpoint, however you want to handle it. But my opinion on the matter is the the absolute love affair that the fan base has with its athletic programs is what has to help the collective in aggregate because you don't have the handful of billionaires that can just go stroke you know, multi-million dollar checks year after year after year to fund a collective. So you got to do it a different way. And it, that, that's an, an aside. So we talked about this yesterday, and I got a very long tweet from a guy named Denny Burke. Um, I'll, I'll give him a shout out. And so he, he tweeted me and he said, Matt, I have a question about something you said on the show. You argue LSU does not have enough money in the collective to get the player it needs from the portal. Uh, by the way, that's not an argument, Denny. Like that is a fact. I am, I'm not guessing. I am telling you that is a fact. LSU's collective is not funded well enough to, to support what we'd all like to see them do. Okay. I'll go on. He says, but then you also say if Brian Kelly had retained Corey Raymond, we would be okay in the defensive back department. He says, I don't think this adds up. Goes on to say, if what you say about LSU's underfunded collective is true, having Corey Raymond won't change things because he would be forced to work with inferior talent. No matter what he might do as a coach, he would be working with a very low ceiling. He goes on and on. And on. Anyway, it's, it's a good point, but here is the counter argument. I want to take you back to something 
that I have argued from the beginning of NIL when we've had this conversation, which is the inherent advantage that LSU will always have if it's willing to take advantage of it is the state of Louisiana. Louisiana, per capita, produces more talent than any other state in the country. And LSU is the only Power Five in a talent-rich state. So to which you're going to say, well, then, Matt, why is the roster what it is? Because even if you sign great classes, you're going to get guys, you're going to lose guys. It's the nature of college football today. There is going to be this free flow in and out. You sign 17 guys out of the portal two years ago, you're going to lose players as well. It's the nature of how this thing goes, okay? So it's not like you get guys that come in as freshmen and they just stay for four years. That's just not the way it works anymore. So you're going to have to constantly replenish with the high school ranks and supplement through the portal, which is the right way to do it, okay? But here's the point. Let me go back and illustrate why LSU's defensive backfield is in the position it's in, okay? And and keep in mind, with respect to Corey Raymond specifically, okay? And there was there was, there was some fella, I, God bless him, he was, he messaged the show yesterday just lambasting Corey Raymond, like he's, he's to blame for the issues, which is asinine because this is the guy who for a decade built LSU into DBU. The reason you got guys like Eric Reed and Jamal Adams and Derek Stingley and Patrick Peterson and Morris Claiborne and Tyron Matthew and all, all the names you know, they all came to play for Corey. But they all had something else in common that I'm, I'm going to get to in a second. So in the 2019 class, you sign five cornerbacks in 2019. Derek Stingley, Mo Hampton, Ray Darius Jones, Jay Ward, Cordell Flott. You hit on three of the five. You signed five cornerbacks in 2019. Five. Stingley, Ward, and Flott, you hit on those guys. You missed on Hampton and Jones. Well, it, maybe it's not even fair to say you missed on Jones, but we'll get to that. So you signed five in 2019, so you're heavy at the position. 2020, you signed two. Elias Ricks, the number one corner in the country, and Dwight McLeather. You also brought in Darren Evans via the portal. So you signed five in 2019 and three in 2020. You had eight cornerbacks you signed in two years. So in 2021, you signed one, Demarius McGee. I would also like to remind you that this was a total disaster of a situation. You're coming off of COVID. There was the Black Lives Matter march where a lot of players were very, very upset. And I'm putting it mildly with Ed Ogeron at that point. We don't need to rip off that Band-Aid or pull off that scab, but the the point remains. There was a lot going on in the program. 2020 and 2021 were disasters around here. And you saw an exodus. Stingley goes to the pros. Hampton leaves. We know you sort of missed there. You know, Flott leaves early for the draft. Jay Ward was back last year, which was so massive for this program. After Ogeron's fired, the staff turnover, Ricks and McLaughlin both leave. So you're left with a complete exodus of the years of classes you had built up. So now, when you had signed five in 2019, three in 20, and one in 21, the only guy that's still there in 22 is Jay Ward. Of the nine cornerbacks you signed over three classes, the only one there in 2022 was Jay Ward. So you were you were decimated. No fault of Corey Raymond's. Corey Raymond built this amazing cornerback room with Stingley and Jay Ward and Cordell Flott and Ricks and McGlother. I mean, you had all these dudes, and everything fell apart, and the coach gets fired, and there was everything that happened. And so now you have... Your numbers are gone. So Brian Kelly's had to rebuild that. Now, all that to explain why they are where they are. Now, to the point that uh, of the guy who asked about um, about if you're if you can't fund the portal, how do you fix it? Here's how you fix it. The state of Louisiana is how you fix it. LSU right now for the class of 2024. Look at the defensive backs that they have committed. The number one player in this class is Deshaun McBride, a safety from Denham Springs. Kai Bates is a cornerback from Orlando. 
Jawan Johnson, maybe the best player in this class. Cornerback from Lafayette Christian. Joel Rogers, safety from West Feliciana. Look at these numbers. You went and got Andre Evans out of Nashville. Wallace Foster, cornerback out of Warren Easton. That's probably the best example right there. Look at what Brian Kelly and, and Brian Polian, to an extent, did a year ago at cornerback. Instead of going down to New Orleans and getting a three-star in, in Wallace Foster, they get on a plane and fly out to Las Vegas and sign Jeremiah Hughes, a three-star from Bishop Gorman, who was the third lowest rated prospect in the class. My point is, if you wanted Jeremiah Hughes, get in a car and go to any high school in a 30-mile radius of the LSU campus or a 60, 100-mile radius of the LSU campus, and you'll find 100 Jeremiah Hugheses because they're all over Louisiana. And they're guys that would ache to play for this program to put on the purple and gold. And you can sign that guy, and he's going to stay and grow and develop and wait his turn. LaTerrence Welch is a great example of that right now. Didn't play last year, didn't leave. The kid's from Acadiana area. He wants to play at LSU. He's here, he stayed. And he's going to stay. Go get those guys. That's what Brian Kelly, and quite honestly, the, the thing, his biggest misses in year one, I told you, was letting Cora Raymond walk out the door and having Brian Polian as his recruiting coordinator and not Frank Wilson. Now that you've, you've fixed that. Polian's out the door, Frank Wilson's your recruiting coordinator. Because Frank understands this state and how to build a roster at LSU with Louisiana kids. You're With Frank Wilson as your recruiting coordinator, the three-star corner you're going to take is Wallace Foster out of Warren Easton in New Orleans, not Jeremiah Hughes from Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas. Does that make sense? That's the biggest difference. That's taking advantage of your biggest advantage, which is the dirt in this state. And that's what you're going to start to see the shift to. Get these guys in Louisiana. Make Louisiana the core of what you do. And then supplement through the portal. Now, how you continue to generate funds for your collective to be able to afford to go get the best players in the portal, that's, that's going to be interesting. And that's going to be something that they're going to have to figure out. And maybe it's going to take losing to be able to go to some of these boosters and say, hey, that defense was awful. Here's a, a corner in the portal. We got to go get him. Can you help? Yes. Maybe that's what it's going to take. Or maybe they get creative in another way. But LSU has got to take advantage of its greatest natural resource, which is the dirt in this state. And it's, I'm not, it's not a knock. Don't misunderstand me. This isn't a knock on Jeremiah Hughes. It's not a knock you know, from Vegas. It's not a knock on Andre Evans, who's in this class out of Nashville. It's just to say, you want to fix that? Start here. Start here with the biggest advantage you have, kids that want to play here. You don't think Will Campbell and Emory Jones had knocks on the door after last season to go any damn where they wanted? Let's not, you know, let's not act like collusion isn't happening, like tampering isn't happening. You don't think those dudes were getting calls? But they bleed purple and gold. They ain't leaving. Take advantage of your biggest advantage, which is the dirt. That's how you do it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.